but we're going to talk about some static pressure tips and just basic static pressure well static pressure these are static pressure tips we're going to talk about static pressure tips as well just waiting for some people to join and i've got some notes over here that i'm going to be reading as well just makes it easier for me because as you get older you start to lose a little bit of brain memory function <laughs> Well, I did, um, I did advertise that this would be happening at noon, so we're starting to get some people in now. Guys, we're going to be talking about some static pressure stuff here real quick. I won't take up too much of your time. This will be very, very basic, but what we're going to talk about is these little things here. These are called static pressure tips, okay? Now, I have some notes over here, guys because I can't remember everything. And I, I want to bring up something that's really important. And that is flow. Uh, if, if we put up resistance to flow, we create pressure, okay? Flow and pressure are two different things. If we have, if we have a pipe this big, right? And then we have flow through that pipe. What happens if we take that pipe and make it half the size? Well, our pressure is going to increase. So remember that flow and pressure are two different things, okay? Uh, so static pressure, when we're measuring static pressure, the best way to do it is with a static pressure tip. That's what this is called here. This is not a pitot tube. A pitot tube, some people get these confused and call them pitot tubes online. This is not a pitot tube. A static pressure tip has a closed end, okay? And then we have some holes on the side right here. A pitot tube actually has holes on the side and an open end because we're taking a couple of different measurements. So for this video here, we're talking about static pressure tips and we have a closed end. Now there's some, I wouldn't say controversy, controversy, but there people get into sort of debates on which way these get put into a duct system, which direction they should flow in. Because of that, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you an example of, of the way I've read it over the years and the way I've understood it. Now, what you want to do is drill a small hole in the duct, maybe around a quarter inch or so to fit this in. Now, you want to also put this in the center of the duct. If it's the bottom or the side, you want to make sure you're getting the center before you put this in. Now, when you put it in, you want the tip, you want this tip here to be parallel with the airflow. So let's say we have the bottom of a duct right here, right? And we drill a small hole in the center, right? We center it. We're gonna put this in and there's a magnet there so that it, it, it will stick with that magnet. It, it won't fall off, which, which is a really cool thing about it. So let's say the airflow is coming across this way. Now, the way I do it is I drill a hole and I put the tip in. So the tip is parallel with the airflow, all right? Now, this is where the argument comes up. Which way do you put it in, this way or this way? Well, in the past, what I've read is this tip here. I've actually read this from the manufacturer of, of these tips. The, the tip here breaks up the velocity. So as the air comes along, it breaks up the velocity not to affect the pressure that's being exerted on the side. So the way I put it in is towards airflow. Some people will say it doesn't matter, okay? But the way I put it in is towards airflow just because of that example I gave you about breaking up the, the velocity. Now, when we have pressure in a duct, basically that, that duct is, is ballooning because the pressure is exerting its force outwards onto the duct, okay? Now, if we put this tip in, just like this, airflow's coming this way, we want these holes to be perpendicular to, to the flow. So, so they are. All right, so the, the, the air, as it's, as it's hitting the duct and the pressure builds up back into here, we're gonna measure static pressure, all right? Now, I have my manometer up here. This is a dual port manometer, and I put it up here just so you guys could see it. We have two sides. We've got a positive side right here, and we've got a negative side right here. You would use the positive and negative if you're doing total external static pressure of a residential furnace, let's say. And I'll give you an example of that in a minute. But let's just say you want to check uh, static pressure of, of a, a duct system on the positive side. 
Well, you would drill your hole, you would put this in. The way I put it in is, is uh, the tip is opposing airflow, so the airflow is coming this way. And basically, you'd want to take the, the negative hose out because basically what it's measuring is a differential pressure between the atmosphere around you, which would be the, the negative side, and then the positive side would be the pressure in the duct. So that would give you a measurement of the static pressure on the positive side. Okay, so let me talk about external static pressure. And I told you this would be short because I don't want to take up too much of your time. Let's say we have a residential furnace. Well, every residential furnace, if you look it up in the manual, will have a total external static pressure. And usually it's around 0 0.5 inches water column. Now, why is that important? Because if you install it and you design the system correctly, the duct is designed correctly, it's balanced correctly, and you do a startup, you do a commissioning, and once you get back to, to that system after you've done that startup and commissioning, well, if you check your external static pressure and it's correct, well, now you have a baseline. Now, when you do service calls or maintenances, when you go back, you can check your external static pressure again to see if anything odd is happening within the system. So let me tell you how, to, how you do that. So this is, this is our negative side, which you're going to put in the return. And this is our positive side, which will obviously go on the supply. So when you insert your static pressure tip for external static pressure, total external static pressure of a residential furnace, you want the negative side to go in between or after the filter, but before the appliance. So in between the filter and the appliance. So hopefully that there, there's a, a piece of sheet metal there in the duct after the filter where you can drill a small hole. Some filter cabinets may already have them in there. And before we check these measurements, we, we want to make sure everything's clean. We want to make sure our secondary heat exchanger is clean, our filter's clean, so on and so forth. So on the negative side, we want to drill a quarter inch hole after, after the filter, but before the furnace. Now on the positive side, what we want to do is because because if you have an ac attached to this this system the furnace the ac is different it's got its own pressure drop across that a coil right now we've looked in the manual for the total external static pressure across that furnace only so what we want to do is we want to drill a small hole and some people say drill it in the cabinet of the furnace but i mean if you have if you have some some space above that furnace um after the furnace but before the a coil that's where i would suggest you do it instead of drilling inside of the cabinet so what we're going to do is we're going to stick our static pressure tips in let's say we have i know this is hard because you're watching a video and i don't have any diagrams or pictures but let's say say we have an airflow pattern we have return coming down to the furnace okay blower wheel and supply coming up well we're going to put our static pressure tip in to the return side and we're going to put our static pressure tip in to the supply side. Now, if that is 0 0.5 inches water column from our manual, well, and the system is, is totally balanced out, for example, 0.25 here, you're gonna read negative 0.25 here and positive 2.5 here. On your manometer, that will show you, that, that will read, um, small fry says wrong. I, I'm asking, let, let me ask small fry why that's wrong and you can comment there. But if you put your static pressure tip in the return and in the supply, you have a negative here and a positive here, negative 2.5, positive 2.5, that will read on your manometer as 0.5 inches water column. Okay, that's what the manual says. Now let's say for instance, you go back after commissioning a couple of years later, you check the static pressure again. Okay. Same thing. You put, you put your tips in the exact same way. Everything is clean. You got to make sure everything is clean first. Let's say on this side, let's say your total external static pressure is, is now 0.6 instead of 0.5. All right. And you've got 0.25 here, right? But that added 10, that added 10 is on the supply side. So you, now you've got 0.35 here. Well, you've got a restriction on this side. Remember what we talked about? Um, restriction will cause pressure buildup. Okay. So if you have flow and then restriction, you're going to have a pressure buildup. So let's say you have the 0.35 here. Well, something's off. So now you're going to have to go figure out what's going on. Is your A coil, is it dirty? 
Has somebody come along and, and closed off some balance dampers? Have, has somebody come along and closed off some, some uh, grills or vents or diffusers in the system? Maybe. This is where having a baseline from commissioning is going to help you. So let's say, let's say it's opposite. Let's say you have that 0.6 instead of the 0.5, but now down here, it, it's, it's different. Okay, commissioning you had negative 0.25, but let's say it's negative 0.35 instead. Well, now you've got some sort of restriction on the return side. Where's that restriction coming from? This is where you have to go investigate. Did somebody block up a return? Uh, is, is it maybe got a, a humidifier, a bypass humidifier in there that maybe the, the pad has fallen out or something? I don't know, it, it's, it's difficult to say. This is where your investigation starts. All I want to make sure is, is you know, when you do your commissioning, if the book, the manual says 0.5 inches water column and you're reading it here, but when you come back, this is higher or now your negative side is, is increased. I say increased, but really it's, it's not increased. You have more negative pressure. This is where you got to look. Okay. Um, so I hope this helps. This is just a short video, guys. Just remember that these are static pressure tips. They're not pitot tubes. They get inserted so the tip is parallel to airflow. The holes should be perpendicular to airflow. And that ballooning effect of that duct will cause these to pressurize, which will go back to your manometer. And that's how you're going to read your static pressure. Total external static pressure, again, is across the appliance. Everything else that's... Um, outside of it, the filter, the A-coil, so on and so forth. If it's not part of that built up appliance, it doesn't get included in your total external static pressure. So you're gonna drill a quarter inch hole, insert, okay, after the filter, before the furnace, and then after the furnace, but before anything else. Um, question here, what are some indicators that you look before you pull out a static pressure tool, meaning something triggers? Um, I mean, if you're just there for uh, a service call, or sorry, if you're just there for a maintenance, you're not really going to know uh, until you put your, your tips in that there's a problem. If you respond to a service call that there's sort of uneven distribution of airflow or, or something like that, it's always a good idea to put these tips in and, and check. But the thing is, you need a baseline. It's so important to have a baseline to check this stuff, because if you don't have a baseline, you're going in blind and then you're gonna to have to check everything you're gonna to have to check the cleanliness of everything first um, making sure all of the diffusers all the balance dampers are open the filters clean uh, there's no problems with the a coil you're moving enough air at the blower the, the blower is wired for the correct speed so on and so forth you're going in blind if you don't have a baseline and you're gonna to have to check all of this stuff from scratch so if you put in new equipment and you want to get a baseline so when you go back so the diagnosis the diagnosis is easier for you the next time then i suggest you create a baseline for everything uh blower motor amp draw suction line discharge line um liquid line temps all of that stuff is really going to help you i know it's time consuming and a, and a lot of installers don't have time for this but trust me in the long run if you're a business owner in the long run this stuff is going to seriously help you identify problems later and it's also going to get you out of a jam with a customer because if a customer is complaining about something and you you did the commissioning and you know what your commissioning numbers are and they're out of whack when you go back a couple years later and now they've they've put furniture in front of uh things or they've added accessories that your company didn't do or they've done themselves that's going to be your get out of jail free card with that customer because now you've got the the data originally to back it up and you have the new data to show them hey something went wrong from commissioning and and we have to rectify this going forward and if you have this on paper like i said get out a jail free card so if if there's any other questions here guys i'm gonna run uh, i just wanted to give you a quick basic rundown of the static pressure tips how to use them commissioning properly getting your total external static pressure and using it as a um, as an indicator going forward on service calls. But having a good manometer is is also going to help guys there's all kinds of manometers out there. This one here is obviously the the smart probe version of the Testo 510. Uh, you got to read everything on your mobile device, your phone, etc. But anyway guys, I'm out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Happy HVAC and guys.